delay, deny, and pretend. But the big question is, how long can this go on? And what does that really, really mean? We're going to be talking about that in relation to the LIBOR and so many more things coming up. I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service, physical gold and silver company specializing in strategies to help you survive and thrive the reset, the financial system, actually it's a full reset, that we are already walking through. And I'm gonna tell you, you really need to have a plan because they do and you are not a priority. So you guys know that I'm paying great attention to what's happening with LIBOR, the or IBORs, interest rate, wait, interbank offer rate. So that is the interest rate benchmark that's used in trillions and trillions and probably quadrillions of contracts that is supposed to go away by the end of 2021. And you remember, they've just run a test in, in Europe and recently in the US, and it's dead silent on that until this news release came out. So I'm gonna read this for you and then I'm gonna talk about it. The Federal Reserve Board on Monday welcomed and supported the release of a proposal and supervisory statements that would enable a clear end date for the U.S. dollar LIBOR and would promote blah, 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 blah. Okay, really what they're doing is they're saying that some of those contracts, those stated interest rate benchmark contracts would end indeed, like they've been saying since 2012, on December 31st, 2021. But they are postponing for two more years other interest rate related contracts, other LIBOR uh, contracts that are written against other LIBOR dates. And that's because they're not ready. I'm thinking, and I can't prove this, so you guys have to know, this is purely my opinion. But I'm thinking that what happened with that 80 trillion that in contracts that they were converting from the LIBOR to the US's SOFR didn't go real well because I still can't find anything about it other than this is the first time that I have seen them postponing it. Now I didn't all along I said, hey, they they can do that. This is certainly not something that is within my control but I'm thinking it didn't go well and they're not ready. And even when you look at their conclusion, and I have the links to all this stuff on our blog, so totally go read it for yourself. But the LIBOR transition is a significant event that poses complex challenges for banks and the financial system. Yeah, think? The agencies encourage banks to cease entering into new contracts that use the US dollar LIBOR as a reference rate as soon as practicable and in any event by December 31st, 2021 in order to blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what they're really saying is they could not get the banks and the corporations to embrace this new SOFR contract. And even when Jay Powell had the opportunity with the Main Street Lending Program, he referenced back to LIBOR. All of those contracts have to be restructured north of 640 trillion in notional value, and they're not, they're not able to do it. I mean, that's what this is telling me. Now, they do want us to know that this statement should not be read as announcing that the LIBOR benchmark has ceased. No, no, it doesn't cease until December 31st of 2021 on some contracts and then postponing. They're not ready. 
and they're having trouble. And when they moved, when they did that experiment in October, it didn't go so well. Because if it went well, I'm thinking they would have let us know how well it went and how easy this transition is going to be. It has never been done before. I'm thinking it did not go well. And, you know, there's all of this justification for having a full global reset, socially, economically, and financially. But they certainly need a lot of things in place. So while there are some that think this is not a big deal, you guys know I am not one of them, and I'm paying attention to this. And the fact that they now postponed for two more years some of the contracts and that they're saying, well, you shouldn't write any more contracts against that. So, so that means that you can write contracts against LIBOR until December 31st. That's just a little bit more. Well, that's 13 months away. Not quite. 13 months away. This is game over, people. There's not one doubt in my mind. This is game over. This is the big event because it will be derivatives that will overwhelm the central bank's ability to print our way out of this. They've used up so much of that ammunition since 2008 when the system really did die. But let's go to some other headline. Well, I mean, first of all, we know we're in a K-shaped recovery where those at the top are doing extraordinarily well because of all of the government money printing, and those at the bottom are doing extraordinarily poorly. But Tesla is set to add 100 billion in trades because they're about to be listed on the S&P 500. They've had five quarters of profits. Five. Woohoo! Elon Musk, second wealthiest man on the planet. Not saying this man is not a flipping genius, but the valuation of this company, I don't know. I, 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 there's no good price discovery. There's just lots and lots and lots of free money out there. And lots and lots and lots of debt. And speaking of debt, recovery hopes fail to rally bonds. The U.S. government bond market is usually highly sensitized to growth prospects and especially to what's known as the reflation trade. See, that's never been my term. That's been their term. When something implodes and deflates, you got to reinflate it. Reflation trade. Uh, the bet that the, well, that's garbage. Faster growth almost always means higher inflation, higher yields, and so lower treasury prices. But the Fed has capped the yields because of this ginormous mountain of debt, wherever it is that you look, whether it's on a government level, a central bank level these days because of what they're holding on their balance sheet, or a corporate level, or even an individual level, it doesn't really matter. Debt is at all time highs. Of course, you have to service that debt. We're going to be talking about the leveraging. But in the meantime, grocery stores prep to give COVID vaccine. These businesses, ready for this? These businesses are part of Operation Warp Speed, which also includes drug makers, medical distrib distributors, and federal agencies. They are going to get this vaccine out and into the public at warp speed. I'm not taking it. If it is an option, I mean, they can hold me down and maybe there's nothing I can do. But if it's an option, I'm not doing it. You, Everybody's got to do, honestly, though, everybody's got to do what they're comfortable doing. But not me. I also like this headline. Because what do we keep hearing is about how great China's doing and how far along they are. And wasn't it great that they're in an authoritarian government that could just mandate all of these things. But on the other side, as China battles poverty, 
colossal projects draw ire. To officials in her corner of China, the statue of Yang Asha, a goddess of beauty, serves as a tribute to the rich culture of the local people, and they hope a big draw for sightseers and their money. To many others in China, she is another, another white elephant in a country full of expensive monuments, gaudy tourist traps, and wasteful vanity projects. So how great are they doing if they're really battling poverty, right? And this is what we're seeing all over. Yeah, Elon Musk is doing fabulous. I'm doing well, I'm gonna be honest with you. But there are so many people that are not. Food, water, shelter, security, barterability, wealth preservation, and community. These are the things that we need no matter what is going on. But food does become the biggest issue. When I was growing up, we had no money. I mean, I, I would venture to say we were probably poor. And we had lots and lots of kids. But, you know, we always managed to eat. Food is the biggest issue. Get it done. Get some kind of storage put back. Make it happen. Because with those frontline workers, those essential workers, hazard pay dries up amid tide of danger. Because, of course, we're having a spike in coronavirus again. With coronavirus cases rising across the country, retailers are preparing for another rush from shoppers worried about new lockdowns and pandemic shortages. But many retail workers, heralded as heroes during the first wave of the pandemic, are not being provided with the same level of bonuses and raises this time even as the health risks for them increase. Some of us get to stay home and work from our homes. And so avoid a lot of the risks are, that are out there. Others, you know, they're not, frankly, they're just not able to do that. That's not a good thing. Suddenly, jobless claims jump, threatening recovery amid worsening virus. Incomes are falling as latest pandemic restrictions expose new pitfalls. Now cracks are beginning to appear. Jobless claims not adjusted for seasonal patterns jumped, blah, blah, a big change, well, jumped by 78,000 last week to nearly 828,000, a big change following an increase of 18,000 the week before. GE plans more cuts in its jet unit, but I love this one. Downturn spurs bids for bank charters. Now, we have talked in the past about how financial technology, fintech, has begun to go in and buy up uh, FDIC-insured banks, small ones so far. Part of the reason is, I think, because in this next huge financial crisis, they expect to be bailed out like what happened in 2008. Maybe so, I don't know. But 10 companies filed applications for a new national bank charter in the fiscal year through September 30th, according to the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. That is the most in a single fiscal year since 2010. Okay, so what does that mean to you? Why do you care about it? Because it's gearing up to take everything digital. That's why it's so important to have, you wanna be diversified? I mean, it's simple. You wanna be properly diversified? Have some physical gold and silver out of the system. What else is completely out of the system? Now, some would say, well, Bitcoin is out of the system. No, you can see everything in Bitcoin. It has to go through a computer system and therefore can be monitored, can be halted. Because the only way for you to convert 
Bitcoin into fiat currency that you can use is taking it out of the system. Now, there are other things that are happening in there because they, because Wall Street is developing that market. So they're making it a lot easier for people to buy it and probably also to liquidate it, but it's not out of the system. Even real estate is not out of the system because you're always going to have property taxes. And you can't put a house on your back and move it like you can with physical gold and silver or gems or real wealth that is mobile. So I want you to really think about that. If there's a dip, right? What, what did the Fed teach us? Buy on the dips. I'm telling you the same thing with physical gold and silver. Buy on the dips. Buy as it's going up. Buy it. Just buy it. Just get it in your possession and hold it. Whoever it is that you buy it from. But you need to have that to be proper, properly protected and properly diversified. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the interview that I just recently did on Tuesday with Mario Aneco. He's definitely a fan favorite. He's one of my favorites too. It was a great discussion. We covered a lot of things from derivatives to the city of London to gold and silver money, everything. And on Thursday, I will be on with Jake Ducey and for a YouTube discussion on all of these same things that we talk about. And he's a new person, so frankly, I don't know what he's going to ask me, which, as you guys know, that's the part that I love. You know, just, just ask. I don't know what you're going to ask, and I'll, I'll give you my opinion. So next week, I'm going to be on with Alternative Investment Podcast with Ben Lakoff. And that's another new person. So, and I really love doing podcasts. We've got lots of things that are going on and some new changes to broaden the offering here at ITM. I'm excited. I can't tell you about them yet, but I'm really excited because I think it's really going to be helpful. Because remember the mantra, food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. These are critical pieces. And we want to make sure to give you the best foundation that we possibly can. So if you like this, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure that you subscribe. Hit that bell next to the subscribe button. We'll let you know when we're issuing a video. And just keep in mind that without any doubt whatsoever, especially with the announcement of postponing the inevitable with the LIBOR going away, I'm telling you, some really nasty things must be happening. This is my opinion. I can't prove it. That's the problem. If I could prove it, I'd feel a whole lot better, better about it, even if it was bad. It must be really, really, really bad for them to make that so opaque and then change the rules or at least change the deadline, not the rules, the deadline. Get yourself protected, please. And until next time, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.